coming right up on Good Taste. Oh, that's delicious. It's a fiesta filled with phenomenal food. Whoa, full of flavor. The journey to create this stunning place was the answer to a heartfelt prayer. When you start as a dishwasher, being able to believe and dream that you can own a restaurant, it's really impossible, right? Find out why a side of inspiration is served at this charming spot. You can accomplish anything here. Then, fantastic. Some say these are the most authentic lobster rolls outside of New England. This is definitely the best. And they're made with lots of love. Plus, a smoky surprise that will make your taste buds cheer. It's really unexpectedly good. Get ready to dig in. Good Taste starts right now. Everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. Ready for a little celebration with some real Mexican flair? Well, we found the perfect spot. This place has everything. Mouth-watering Mexican food, award-winning magnificent margaritas, thank you. All beside a beautiful lake. Yet the story that brought this all together might just be the best dish of all. Always a party happening here. Caprisa. Oh, I love it. I am in love with everything Dia de Muertos. No bones about it. Every bite here is heavenly. Whoa, full of flavor. And Brisa is a fiesta of flavors. Just fantastic food and service. Here, you'll find all your favorites, like steaming fajitas with marinated beef, chicken, ribs, and shrimp, served sizzling in a beautiful volcanic bowl or reel in this beauty, fresh out of the gulf and onto your plate. This crispy red snapper gets deep fried and served over a bed of tostones and rice with Veracruzana sauce, made from fresh tomatoes, capers, and olives. Muy bueno. Pineapple. Pineapple. Oh, that's delicious. The Mexican street corn is another favorite. Fresh roasted corn on the cob, drizzled with zesty garlic aioli queso fresco, and sprinkled with lime salt and cilantro. There are sensational salads that taste as delicious as they look, too, like the refreshing watermelon salad. On the sweet side, try the arroz con leche, creamy Mexican rice pudding mixed with raisins and walnuts, sprinkled with cinnamon, plus two fried churros to boot. Located near Houston, Ambriza's right on the boardwalk at beautiful Town Lake in Cyprus. Yeah, the view's great. You got the lake here. People come up and park their boats and uh, come eat lunch. It's stunning. It's just <laughs> beautiful. The visionary behind this celebration of life has plenty on his plate. How did you get into the restaurant business? My first job when I moved to Houston uh, didn't speak English. But I remember back then, you was praying every day that God would allow me to become a server one day. That's all I ever wanted to be. And when you go above and beyond, people can see that. Eventually, Julio's passion led him to his destiny. When you start as a dishwasher, being able to believe and dream that you can own a restaurant, it's really impossible, right? There's no way. But I did have that dream. I knew I could become a business owner because I wanted to make a difference in, my, in people's lives, my employees, the people that I served. That's all I wanted to do. But during his journey, Julio suffered some setbacks and depression that tested his faith. And I remember one day just giving up and saying, God, it's in your hands. If it happens, happens. If not, I'm gonna be a great business manager. And two weeks after I prayed that prayer, truly prayed that prayer, uh, a guy I used to work for who owned Italian restaurants Text me. I had not spoken with him in years, and the text read, do you want to buy my restaurant? Out of nowhere, Julio's prayer was answered. And you never know who you're serving. Exactly. To me, that's the beauty of our, of our business, our hospitality. Ambriza is named after Julio's wife, Amber. She teamed up with him to create this unique Mexican restaurant. Want to see? 
Tell me about that margarita. Amazing. It's really, really good. It's a must try. Oh, that's fantastic. From humble beginnings to great success, for Julio, the American dream is real. I can tell you one thing. There's no greater country than this country. Full of opportunities if you want and full of safety and, and structure. And you can accomplish anything here. Ambriza is steeped in traditional Mexican dishes, but also offers a twist on current trends. Like this creation, called a quesabiria, combining a crunchy, cheesy quesadilla with a super savory sauce. Birria is a typical dish in Jalisco, Mexico. And it's kind of barbacoa thing, so it's uh, like a stew of meat. Uh, the only thing is that it comes with all these chiles. So we use guajillo, chile ancho, and chile morita. They are dry chiles. Lots of flavors, smoke, lot of flavor. spice, you smoke, name it. Yeah, so I mix it all and then put it in, into the short ribs. That's right, short ribs. That's what sets this birria dish at Embriza apart. It's, uh, it's, it's a different, completely different flavor. So all these ingredients get mixed with the meat and slow cooked for six to seven hours. The quesadillas are made with tortillas on the grill, shredded beef, and an amazing creamy cheese called manonita, named for the community where it's made in Chihuahua, Mexico. The finished dish is a true delight. Sure. <laughs> That is amazing. Thank you. That's fantastic. That really is. Yep. We have the recipe online. There's a wow around every corner for diners at Embriza. Good margaritas, good food, good appetizers at a price that us teachers can afford is definitely the best. The best. <laughs> Meantime, Julio will keep serving his favorite side dish, inspiration. I was a dishwasher. Yeah. Didn't speak a word of English. I came here with $500 in my pocket. We have over 200 employees opening restaurants, creating opportunities. And I believe that they're all born for greatness. They have a great future ahead of them. Truly, that's the recipe for his greatest dish. To make a difference in people's lives. To leave things better than, than you found it. Hospitality is a human right to us as a company. And we believe that. Congrats on your success. Here, let's Thank you. Cheers, cheers to many, many more years and many more successful team members. Thank you. Hope you're still hungry. Welcome to the Goya Kitchens in Houston with the executive chef of Goya, everyone's favorite, Fernando Desa. We love everything you make and we're in for a treat today, right? Thank you, Tanji. Today we're having a jerk shrimp season with a lot of good flavors with rice and beans that is amazing. And it's really pretty easy to make. Show us what we do, Chef. Okay, so to start, we're gonna marinate the shrimp with the rub that we previously made. A lot of herbs, spices, oh, yeah. lime juice. And we've got the recipe online. Okay, so we're gonna cover with plastic wrap, put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Okay. And then we're ready to cook it, okay? into a hot pan. We're gonna add some Goya to virgin olive oil, so good. An amazing product. Price point you won't believe, but the quality of this olive oil, it really is Unique special. in the market, okay? So now we're gonna sear the shrimp. This is a nice looking shrimp. Oh, so good. Gotta make sure we just cook around 10 to 12 shrimp at a time, not too many, because then you're gonna get the pot too cold. Good to know, so don't crowd the pan. You don't crowd the pan, you can crowd the pan. It's gonna basically steam the shrimp. What you want is a nice sear. When I get that nice brown from all those herbs. Shrimp is ready, now we're gonna start plating. We got rice and beans we've okay. made before. Recipe you can find it online. The recipe is interesting. There's coconut milk mixed coconut into milk this, right? With a red kidney. Very tasty. Some fresh cilantro on top. Time for the best part. Try it get out. to taste. Nice and tender shrimp, nice and spicy. The rice and beans with the coconut milk is fantastic. Ooh. So good, I right? love that. Yes, the shrimp have a lot of spice and then there's a sweetness to that milk. To the rice, yeah. That is fantastic. We've got the recipe online. Chef, thank you. Thank you. That jerk shrimp was so good. Still to come, it's that time of year. So I've got some perfect picks for your table in my wine finds. 
but first. It was fantastic. The bread was so heavenly and so buttery. Just like you want a lobster roll roll to be, right? That's right. We're really on a roll. A lobster roll, that is. Next. Get social with us. Follow us on Instagram at Good Taste TV. Cisco, at the heart of food and service. Ahoy, mateys. We're getting ready to set sail for the delicious taste of fresh lobster right off the coastal waters of Maine. But we're not setting course for New England. We're dropping anchor deep in the heart of Texas at a new hot spot where lobster rolls rule. Up in New England, lobster is the main event. You might say lobster is to Maine what barbecue is to Texas. It's definitely the go-to dish up in those parts. Now that Mason's famous lobster rolls has landed in downtown Austin, Diners here have found a real taste of Maine right in the Lone Star State. It's amazing, never had one before. The lobster was fresh, everything was crisp, it was wonderful. This is definitely the best. The classic roll includes large chunks of fresh, chilled Maine lobster, drizzled with lemon butter, and served on a heavenly toasted and buttered roll. This one was amazing. Or have a bite of the Connecticut roll, featuring fresh poached lobster, served warm and bathed in butter. It is our most popular roll. Other favorites include the lobster bisque and the creamy New England clam chowder, both begging for a bowl full. That's what I grew up with, New England style, and I love it. And how about this for a Texas twist? Try a lobster grilled cheese made from Texas toast, filled with tender chunks of Maine lobster and sharp white cheddar cheese, grilled to a golden crunch. That would be the ultimate gourmet kid sandwich. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> because one can't live by lobster alone, take the fresh Gulf shrimp salad for a spin. You'll love every bite. So tell me about your buns. We get our New England split top rolls from bakeries in New England. It was fantastic. The bread was so heavenly and so buttery. So what's the main reason for Mason's big success? Well, it's plain Maine. Our lobster, of course, is straight from Penobscot Bay, Maine. And that's important because the lobster from Maine is much more of a higher quality. Right. So it, it's it, sweeter, right? It's sweeter, it's more tender, which is due to the cold and clean waters, which allowed the lobsters themselves to age slowly, which leads to the, the sweeter and the tender yeah, meat. It's just lobster and butter. <laughs> this lobster love fest comes from a New England couple who couldn't wait to share their favorite delicacy with us Texans. We moved here from New York about seven years ago. Uh, both of us were working in the corporate world and I uh, decided to make a move out of that world. And it's been a blast to be able to share something that's near and dear to us. And this is this really great way of indulging, you know, and having this little treat because lobster is exactly that. It's so delicious. It is a treat. You're absolutely right. You feel a little special. After his parents came to America from India, co-owner Tahir Dilla grew up around New England seafood in Boston. I'm first generation and this restaurant kind of dovetails into that history. Um, food has always been a very important part of our life. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um. Dare's passion about food really fueled his leap into the restaurant business. In our culture, food is just, it's so part of everything. And it's the star. Even at weddings or, you know, even we have people for Christmas or whatever it was. And, you know, my mom is also just an outstanding cook. So some of my earliest memories are helping her in the kitchen. Lobster is actually his mother's love language, so. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot of our love language, I think, right? <laughs> that love definitely shines through the lobster salad roll, which rolls out a whole different kind of taste, one you can make at home. We're gonna start with our lobster salad dressing. Start with a little bit of mayonnaise and some sour cream. A little bit of mayo. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> also in the mix is some chopped celery, lemon juice, and celery salt. Add all that to these big chunks of sweet succulent lobster meat, and we're definitely on a roll. Are you gonna taste one with Let's me? Let's do it, Tangie. Open wide. You're not kidding, open wide. 
Ah. Okay. Cheers. Mm. Ah. Mm. That zesty citrus, it's really good. And it's all buttery and toasted, That's just right. like you want a lobster <laughs> roll roll to be, right? That's right, Tandy. Fantastic. For dessert, save room for a whoopie pie. They come from a bakery in Maine called Diane's. They're a little bit of chocolate cake filled with vanilla icing. They're outstanding. Worth every bit of it. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. Come here, it's really good. So when you're in the capital city, treat yourself to a big juicy bite of Maine without ever leaving the Lone Star State. You gotta try it, it's amazing. Well, congrats on your success. Cheers. Cheers. my wine finds and we're getting ready for some family time meals. I've got the perfect wines to go with. At first, a sparkling that's perfect to kick off any celebration. The Gloria Ferrer Blanc de Blanc. This all Chardonnay sparkling sings of apples and pears. Its bright sparkling mouthfeel is a real crowd pleaser. The Gloria Ferrer Blanc de Blanc is only $19 a bottle. Up next, this time of year screams for Pinot Noir, right? Well, I found a lovely Pinot Noir from California's Central Coast. It's made by a very popular winemaker, the Bezel Pinot Noir from the Cake Bread family. This wine is easy drinking with its lovely cherry flavors that are laced with hints of vanilla. Everything you would expect from Cake Bread wines with a very approachable price at $29.98 a bottle. Up next, a wine from a winemaker that never disappoints the Catherine Stonemason Hill Cabernet from Goldschmidt Wines. This full-bodied wine has a rich, pleasing mouthfeel, very balanced with dark cherries, cocoa, a hint of coffee. It's bottled unfined and it's unfiltered, so vegans take note. Meat lovers too, I love this wine. The Catherine Goldschmidt Stonemason Hill Cabernet is about $22 a bottle. Cheers to all your special celebrations. The good stuff starts right here at HEB. Coming up, we're getting smoke signals from something really good. Oh, whoa, it really is good. Get ready for a barbecue surprise with a real twist. Gotcha, didn't we? You're in for something fun today. We're serving up something extra special next. We love to share good taste. Head to our website at goodtaste.tv where you'll find delicious recipes from top chefs, my latest wine finds, and restaurant recommendations. Plus, you can see all our episodes right here. Don't forget, sign up for our newsletter while you're there. Good Taste with Tangie is brought to you in part by HEB. Gotcha, didn't we? You're in for something fun today. Always something delicious and wonderful at the barbecue capital of Texas, Lockhart. And I am with the star in Lockhart when it comes to barbecue. More than 90 years, Black's original barbecue, and I'm with the fourth generation pit master, Barrett Black, and we are really shaking things up today. That's right, yeah, we're not changing what we do. We're still an old school barbecue joint. We got plenty of brisket and everything. But once, Thank goodness. That's, yes, <laughs> yes, so, but this is something that I like to do at home for my, family my friends is experiment with different vegetables. It's a challenge uh, for me, but we're going to apply some of the 90 years of experience of cooking meat to cooking these vegetables. I love purple cabbage just because of the color. It really pops and it's an easy, beautiful side that we're actually going to use um, not as a side dish, but to top our sandwich that we're going to make with spaghetti squash. Great vegetable that is easy to cook as well. We're going to scoop that part out. Take this is our dry rub right here, just salt and pepper. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the outside. That kind of helps soften it up a little bit as well. These are some that have been cooking for about two and a half, three hours. And that's why they call it spaghetti squash, because as it cooks, it starts to kind of come apart like sp spaghetti strands. You don't want to go too crazy, but it's a little pinch of chili, chili powder. powder. A little bit of garlic powder. You know, I like to use my grandmother's barbecue sauce oh, yeah. in just about everything, but especially this. Chipotle mustard pepper sauce, not necessarily to make it spicy, but just gives it a, just a little bit of heat on the back. So we're just gonna mix that up. And as you can see, it's got a great texture to yeah. it already. 
Oh, whoa. That really is good. <laughs> Did you have doubts? <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting those flavors on spaghetti squash. Yeah, that's vegan on the grill. Well, I love it. In fact, it's really unexpectedly good. <laughs> We've got the recipe online there. Thank you. Don't miss a minute. More good taste coming right up. When visiting the Houston area, the Good Taste team loves to stay at the Best Western Plus in Katy, conveniently located right on the I-10 corridor with easy access to all your favorite destinations. If you're hungry and maybe thirsty, head to our website at goodtaste.tv where you'll find all of the recipes from today's show. And don't forget, follow us on Instagram at goodtaste.tv. This week, we want to give a shout out to our wonderful TV affiliates in West Texas, KFOX in El Paso and KWES in Midland, Odessa. Thanks for your good taste, y'all. And thanks to all of you for watching each and every week. We'll see you right back here next week. Cheers to good taste. We're talking a major margarita. This, this puppy's full. Use two hands, right? <laughs> Always do hands. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's good, yeah. And before Very you go, nice. I'm gonna give you a half a gallon to take home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it won't last long. <laughs>